Here in Politics, a conversation with the Premier of Saskatchewan, Brad Wall. Welcome to our conversation with Premier Brad Wall. I'm Danelle Boyvin. And I'm Rob McDonald. And Premier Wall, we welcome you. Thanks very much. And this has been quite a year for Saskatchewan. How would you characterize 2012 for the province? Well, it's been a year of continued leadership for the province, I think, in a number of categories. Uh, when you consider uh, that, you know, our economy has uh, remained very strong through the year, and there's been a number of uh, uh, statistics where we've continued to lead uh, the nation, and uh, building permits is one, uh, retail sales is another, uh, even GDP forecasts uh, by the major chartered banks and others. We are forecast to remain strong, had a good year, and, and remain strong in the year ahead. Uh, and that growth, though, has meant challenges. Uh, better the challenges of growth, I would say, than the challenges of decline. Uh, but there are st uh, nonetheless, there are important challenges to face, and those would be infrastructure issues, housing. Um, we had to provide some additional money in year for, for school boards that were growing for regions of the province that were growing in terms of enrollment. That was a first ever $6 million here this fall. And so I think the year has been good overall in terms of uh, economic growth, but it's underscored the importance that we remain very vigilant about sustaining the growth and also dealing with the challenges that come with it. Premier Wall, the, the government is both that Saskatchewan is the only province in Canada with a balanced budget. Uh, based on the midterm financial report though, some would say that it's a razor thin surplus. Uh, is that a wake up call to the province? Well, I think, first of all, if you go back to Budget Day uh, this spring, there it was not a, a huge surplus there. It was a balance both in what they call the summary financial statements, that's the overall picture of government, and also the operating account or the general revenue fund. It was a balance on both on both accounts, but it was not a large uh, surplus there. And uh, we we see that that's still the case today. In fact, it was interesting, we see uh, in this mid-year uh, report you referenced that came out this fall that uh, there was was uh, the least amount of fluctuation between what we originally forecast uh, in the budget and what was reported midway through the year, uh, the least amount of variation over the last number of years in the province. Um, but there are still challenges. Uh, you know, resource revenue is down, natural resource revenue is down, but a growing economy is made up for it in terms of increased income tax and, and other forms of uh, resources uh, of revenue for the province. So it is, it's not a huge surplus, but it is a balance and it's and, unique in Canada. And there are factors that are beyond Saskatchewan's control. We depend on a, a strong global economy to sell our potash, our, our other natural resources. At the same time, the rest of the world, uh, we find itself increasingly desperate situations out there for, for many countries. Yet we are told by the Saskatchewan government not to worry because as the finance minister puts it, uh, our economy is more diverse. How long can we expect an optimistic outlook for Saskatchewan? Well, it's a very important question. I, I think you've heard us say that as a government uh, and as a province will not be as, a, as an economy will not be immune to what's going around uh, on around the world and uh, we do see some uh, challenges in the world economy ahead but what the Minister of Finance is referring to is that we are more d diversified now and the mid-year report pr uh, demonstrates it where we do see potash revenues off from what we forecast oil uh, is off from what we forecast uh, and what we've seen though is because of other elements of our economy uh, are demonstrating continued strength that are in income taxes are up and up significantly and and I guess that's what diversification is all about as a government we released a growth plan this fall where we we highlighted a, a plan and a vision that we wouldn't be quite as dependent on the resource sector uh, but that we would diversify to other sectors that we would focus on innovation on the new economy whether it's the Global Food Security Institute in Saskatoon or the Petroleum Research Center here uh, and I think it's important that we do that because we're not immune to what's going on around the world still we have a, a, a unique and positive story to tell and it's up to us to continue to tell it because that's what generates even more interest and investment back home. However, there are some people that are, are not feeling the benefits of a growing economy, particularly those needing affordable housing. What do you say to those people? Part of our growth plan we released this fall was a $340 million five-year investment in housing on top of what we've done already. You're right. Uh, the housing markets, uh, especially in well, in our in our urban centers, 
and in, in some of the smaller urban centers, Estevan is one, are, these, these markets are very tight. And so we have a mix of programs to provide incentives for first time home uh, uh, buyers, an incentive in the last budget actually to provide some tax, uh, uh, some tax incentives to those who will build apartments. I think we're going to see some uptake on that. And then more public housing. Uh, we've indicated that we need to build more, more public housing for those who are most vulnerable. Uh, and we're going to continue to focus on the housing issue. It's in terms of these challenges of growth that we speak of, it's at the top of the list. All right, Premier, uh, while the government is making many changes that will impact the government of Saskatchewan, we want to talk about that uh, when we return. Sure. year-end conversation with Premier Brad Wall continues. I'm Rob McDonald. And I'm Danelle Boyven. Premier Wall, uh, one of the most controversial decisions of the year was the decision to axe the film tax credit. That then made a lot of production companies leave the province. So first off, let's get you to walk us through the process in that decision. Sure. Well, it was obviously part of a budget uh, process and these are uh, these are uh, times in government where there are difficult choices to be made and this was uh, this was one of them uh, as you know we've already touched on the fact that we have the country's only uh, balanced budget but even within that balanced budget we were able to make historic investments for the disabled uh, in our province in terms of uh, significant increases to income support for the disabled we were able to make significant uh, investments in infrastructure increases in capital uh, in health care and education another record high highways budget and so, uh, you know, we, we, we make other decisions to, uh, to cut back. Uh, Are you regretting it? I think it's important for us to move forward with something that can support not just the film industry but all creative industries and the minister is working on that now. We're not going to go back to a tax credit that was effectively a grant where where we were we were basically in a bidding war with other provinces. A lot of the companies that would come in would set up a shell company for the production and lots of the benefits stayed here to be sure but a lot of it left the province as well and so we're looking at a way to to focus more on indigenous or companies located here in that industry but in all the creative industries in music for example, uh, in uh, in in live art. So uh, I think you're going to see some progress on that in the months ahead. Did you anticipate there would be such a backlash to this decision, though? Uh, you were even criticized by the Saskatchewan Chamber of Commerce on this. Uh, I'm wondering also what, what you may have learned by the way the government uh, handled this situation. I think it's important to learn from these things, absolutely. And so, uh, you know, it, a budget process is unique in another way, and that's you make tax changes that you can't announce ahead of time by definition definition it's difficult to consult on the substantive parts of a budget that's why there's lockdowns and secrecy uh, and in this case uh, we made an announcement that did have a certain a large impact on an industry as as has been pointed out and uh, what was not what was not able to be achieved is some some other option in place prior to that change and so uh, you know that's a part we're working on now that's what we're focused on right now and I'm hopeful that we're going to see some progress as I said in, in the in the weeks and months ahead okay uh, message to you know young students wanting to get into this industry uh, perhaps production companies that are are sticking around? Well, you know, we have nine. We, as you remember, we extended the film tax credit to the end of June as a requ uh, request from the industry. And I think officials have told me there's $9 million worth of uh, film tax credit, uh, estimated film tax credit work still going on or to go on in the province. So I'm not sure uh, how that must be impacting production companies that are here still. But overall, our message to young people in this province is pretty clear. We now have the Saskatchewan Advantage Scholarship to help you pay for tuition. Uh, we have support for parents now that we've increased as a result of this session this legislative session to help them save for their kids education and we have the most aggressive graduate retention program in the country to uh, to enable those students with if they stay here after graduation to earn up to twenty thousand dollars of tuition if they'll stay in the province okay let's talk ISC now uh, the plans are to privatize ISC information services corporation uh, handles land transactions the government under this plan would keep 40% control. How big of a, a draw is ISC to investors? 
I think it'll be, uh, I think we're going to find out in the spring if the bill passes and if uh, the market uh, conditions are right that we can go to a public offering. By the way, we want to start with employees in Saskatchewan, people having a first chance at these shares for this very effective uh, uh, information management company that we have in the province. I'm pretty hopeful. I think the market will, will answer that question uh, you know, in due course. Uh, we're going to, a couple of very important points. Uh, we're going to take vital statistics that has been currently with Information Services Corporation back into government. So it will not be a part of the new entity. It'll be back with the health ministry. Second point, probably $90 million to be raised in the share offering, even though we're keeping 40%. We're going to invest that in long-term infrastructure. That's what the province needs right now. We just discussed housing. That's a good example of it. Uh, and so, uh, and we're going to maintain that 40% uh, interest and, and, and representation on the board. Uh, and we're going to want to make sure we control rates. Interesting to note, by the way, that Manitoba, where there's an NDP government, just announced last week that they're privatized their registry to an Ontario company where we've chosen a, a public share offering route and uh, to maintain 40% of the of the company. What are the benefits to the people of Saskatchewan by doing this though? Are, are you not concerned that fees for land transactions will rise with with investor demands for for example and and dividends to the province will be will be reduced in the future? We can prescribe and will rate protection for people going forward. We're going to maintain what's called the golden share and that means the head office stays here. It means we have certain representation on the board. It means we maintain a certain percentage of the company. And it's good for the people of the province because we can use the proceeds from the sale to invest in long-term uh, infrastructure across the province. It's also good because ISC has the chance to compete. But other companies, other governments, I should say, that want to contract out their own property registries are hesitant to deal with other governments. They are, as we've seen the NDP government in Manitoba demonstrate, they are willing to deal with other companies. In their case, in Manitoba, they're privatizing to the Ontario private company I've mentioned. So let's give ISC a chance to compete. Head office here, uh, it'll grow in this, uh, in this uh, province. We've seen examples in the Potash Corp and Cameco where previously government-owned companies have now expanded their jobs they offer here in Saskatchewan, and we think that's possible with ISC. All right, changes to labor laws are in the works in Saskatchewan. We'll uh, talk about that with Premier Bradwall when we return. And we're back with Premier Brad Wall. The Saskatchewan Party government introduced sweeping changes to the province's labour laws uh, in the fall sitting of the legislature. Why did you find it necessary to do that? Uh, what wasn't working in your opinion? Well, we had promised to, uh, in, in the most recent campaign that we would be vigilant about ensuring that our labour legislative environment was fair to both sides but competitive with, with other jurisdictions. And, you know, the, the minister brought forward uh, the, the opportunity to consolidate all these various uh, labor-related uh, legislation or acts that we have in government into one uh, and begin a consultation process, which we were serious about. We asked a number of questions at the top of that legislative con uh, consultation process, got feedback uh, immediately from, from stakeholders and the people of the province, and that's, what we, that's why we did it. And that feedback was taken into account uh, in the changes. And so there's some imp uh, increased accountability for, uh, for unions to their members in terms of financial accountability, uh, but we also heard from people that for example we needed to index the minimum wage to your question Rob. Mm -hmm. you know what why would we want to do this well I think it's important that the minimum wage be indexed there's a bunch of uh, of housekeeping we'll call them housekeeping changes that were made as well uh, and uh, we'll now go into the spring session with the bill the consultation period's not over we've told uh, the people of the province that we're going to be listening carefully there may be friendly amendments there may be changes the yet. devil is in the details says well the minister. That, the minister said that yeah. and so uh, we don't know about unintended and consequences. We want to get it right. And uh, I think we've even heard measured responses from all sides, some disappointment on all sides, which means maybe we got it right. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have now a very uh, modern employment act uh, that encompasses all of these areas and one that we really believe is fair to both sides and most importantly fair to the worker and, uh, and uh, will help the economy sustain its current economic progress. Now the province is also making sweeping changes to liquor laws, uh, opening the door to privately owned liquor stores, uh, perhaps, perhaps changing the uh, the minimum drinking age, uh, also allowing liquor in strip clubs. Um, 
what was the thought process behind this? Was it called for? Well, the liquor stores is separate from the 77 changes you've referenced in terms of liquor laws. The short answer on that is yes, it has been called for. Some of the changes were asked for, perhaps not as loudly as others. For example, we heard from golf courses who said, you know, there's a rule that says when you when you buy a, a beer on the golf course, the person selling it to you has to open it. It's illegal for the purchaser to open it. There were a few things like that that, that had been quietly asked for that seemed to be more about common sense than anything else. Uh, with respect to uh, the uh, the issue of, uh, of nudity, uh, we made a change in, in, li in licensed establishments. We've made a change, as you've quite rightly pointed out, we're still by far the most restrictive place in Canada because we're not allowing full frontal nudity in licensed premises. We also heard that from people as well, that they didn't mind that being unique in that way and neither does the government. Um, so with respect to the drinking age, no decision's been made. That was a resolution at our party convention. I have not heard uh, from a great many people in support of that resolution. As we've, got, as we've started the consultation process, we'll have something to say about that in the new year. And finally, on the issue of stores, we, we've had private stores for a very long time in Saskatchewan. We've had this blend. We have private off-sale. We have private liquor vendors in rural Saskatchewan where, there's not, uh, where there are not stores. And we've just decided that if there is a need for new stores in neighborhoods that are growing in our major centers, for example, that rather than put government money into bricks and mortar, let's have a transparent process and see if the private sector can't deliver those new stores. Okay. Not, a, not yeah. a change to existing stores. All right. in, in 2012, the provincial government came to the aid of, of a refugee who needed cancer treatment uh, after the federal government refused to pay for it. Uh, you were quite critical of Ottawa at the time. I'm wondering, did you have discussions with Saskatchewan Conservative MPs on this issue? And do you think they did enough to support this refugee who is now in Saskatchewan? You know, by and large, we have a very good relationship with the federal government and the federal members of parliament. Uh, it's, uh, it's a proactive relationship and they have been a voice for our issues in Ottawa all the way back to the potash takeover, you know, you name the, the issue that we've dealt with, the wheat board, for example. Uh, there are areas where we're not going to agree. Uh, and there's been a bit of uh, interaction between members of parliament, officials of the provincial government on this particular issue and on some other immigration issues where we have concerns, changes to the nominee program that we, we didn't support. Uh, we'd like to see the nominee cap increase and no word on that yet from Ottawa, we're hopeful still. And on the issue of this refugee, yes, we it were, we were in disagreement. That's going to happen. Provinces are not always going to agree with the federal government uh, and in this area we didn't. We thought it was important that this, uh, this individual be uh, treated uh, for cancer including the drugs he needed uh, uh, post-treatment. Now, aside from medical coverage, uh, when it comes to federal cuts, a lot of them are happening in Saskatchewan. What do you think about that? Well, the cuts are being made by the federal government, and they're happening across the country. But you're right; we're very uh, we're very uh, aware of the ones that are happening here in our uh, in our own backyard. You know, the community pastures has been one that's raised with us. We uh, are 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 inheriting these from the federal government, whether we want to or not. So our number one priority is the patrons, for example, those who use the pastures and we've said to them look if you're interested in buying them or leasing from them under similar terms that was uh, that were there before we'd be happy to move forward in that regard so we will work through these things we've also made changes uh, spending reductions and so if we're all if we're if we're focused on a balanced budget and fiscal responsibility here then we need to be a bit circumspect about uh, other levels of government that will make their changes um, and but we will speak out for Saskatchewan's interests as we have in the past if there's a, a clear threat to those interests all right Premier Rawl we want to talk about the mix of social media and politics we'll do that after the break also the popularity of the Saskatchewan party that's coming up back with Premier Brad Wall. Uh, Premier, we saw a TV advertisement by the Saskatchewan party in the fall criticizing the four candidates for the NDP leadership. You're three years away from a provincial election. Why negative advertising now? Well, the ad was about standing up for Saskatchewan and uh, it posed a question. Why haven't the provincial NDP and those running to lead it who, uh, who are aspirants to be Premier stood up to the comments made by Mr. Mulcair, the federal NDP leader, when he characterized our economy as a disease. And so I, 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 we're all 
always going to take the opportunity to stand up for the province and we'll challenge others who are in our political parties wanting to be the government if we, we think that uh, perhaps they for whatever reason have not. But sh should the opposition not have the opportunity to choose a leader without interference by the Saskatchewan party? Well, I think a part of the, uh, the choice for leadership that they're making uh, is are they going to choose a leader that's prepared to say look yes we have a federal NDP party but when it comes to Saskatchewan uh, we will stand up for Saskatchewan interests. All right. Can we expect something similar in the months leading up to the NDP vote? You know we use, uh, I, 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 no I don't think there's going to be anything different or new uh, in the direct answer to your question. I do think you'll see our party continue to focus on our record and defend it but also we're going to use contrast advertising to highlight where we think there needs to be answers to questions from our opponents. Okay let's talk about you specifically. You continue to top the polls when it comes to public opinion, the most popular premier in the country. Uh, are those big shoes to fill? Is, do you have a lot to live up to? Well, there's only one place to go from here, and that's down. I always, <laughs> I always joke that I think I'm pretty sure that Angus Reid. It's the Angus Reid that does these polls. They do them every quarter. I think it's that's the company, and I'm pretty sure they oversample at my parents uh, <laughs> you know, because uh, I, I think I, I had about a 33% disapproval rating when I lived there. So I think that's you know, I, I, we've been very lucky as a government, so I'm going to benefit from that, I guess, in these numbers. You know, I we we need to always point that out that just with respect to economic growth and even how our party's done we need to acknowledge the good fortune that we've had and things beyond our control and uh, you know so uh, we just keep our head down and, and hope you know keep the promises that we made and uh, uh, and be grateful for the good fortune that we've had. Okay you, you're a big fan of Twitter we all know that mm -hmm. uh, uh, social media I want to get this question and you may sure. have heard of AMA chat sessions ask me anything chat yeah sessions. I sure have yeah yeah <laughs> okay he has. now there's a question that's quite popular <laughs> Out there, and I oh, want to pose it to you. Is this the horse and the duck? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, know, you know exactly what I'm going to. Yeah. Given the ultimatum, yeah. would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? I I like our chances uh, against one horse-sized duck. I think <laughs> we just have so many MLAs now that we're blessed with. <laughs> one of them, Gene Mikowski. I like uh -huh. I like yeah. our chances. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it's been fun. We do have a, a short time left, so sure. if you'd like to address the people of Saskatchewan, we'd like you to as well. Well, first of all, thanks to you two for the time and to CTV for this opportunity. And I, I just like to say on behalf of Tammy and Megan and Coulter and Faith, our family, that we hope you've had a great Christmas and we hope you have a wonderful new year, a happy and healthy 2013. All the best. All right, Premier Brad Wall, we wish you and your family uh, the best over the holidays, of course, and thank you for joining us. Uh, it's been a pleasure for us. Thank you very much.